Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we have the Anycubic Mega X. This is the printer I'm going to use for my next build. Uh, the next build I'm going to be doing will be the Eagle by Plane Print. They just released it, so we're going to print all of the parts out for that plane uh, on this printer. It's got a couple different things to it. It's got lightweight PLA, regular PLA, and a little bit of TPU, so it's really going to be able to test this printer out, uh, see how well it works for all those different materials. Uh, it's got a couple nice features that I think will do well for thin wall printing, so I'll let you guys know how that, how that goes. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how to set all this up, get it ready for your thin wall. I'm going to have all of the settings I use in the description below. So check that out if you guys want uh, the settings that I use for this printer. Or if you have a printer that's similar size or this exact printer, it should get you pretty close. So we're going to test this out and see how well this thing works for thin wall printing. To assemble this printer, it's very easy. Uh, it comes with step-by-step -step directions. There's basically just a base unit and the Z-axis tower that we need to set up. Wow. Holy cow, there's a full roll of PLA in here. Wow, I've never seen a 3D printer come with a full roll of PLA. Usually it has like a couple little strings, not even hardly enough to do the test part. So wow, full roll. Okay, well that completes the assembly on the printer. Uh, very easy, you know, setup process with the tower and everything else. So uh, let's get this thing over to the printing table. We'll get it all set up, leveled, and we'll start printing on it. When I'm printing these airplane parts out, I usually don't use a runout sensor. You can see this runout sensor kind of changes the angle where the PLA comes off the spool. So I go ahead and cut this off and then secure that runout sensor in place and then just run the filament right into the extruder. It has more of a direct path that way. Now we're gonna go ahead and home all the uh, axes so we can go ahead and level it. I try to position the camera so you guys can see this here. I don't use like a paper or anything like that. I just use my eye just to see how far it is from the extruder from the bed to level the bed. Now we're going to set the SD card in. The first thing we're going to do is a flow test. A flow test is just a basically a square that I made so I can just uh, check to make sure that when it's printing at 0.4 millimeter wall thickness that I actually get 0.4 millimeter wall thickness. So I'll check that with my caliper. Uh, that checks out so we can print at 100%. Then we're going to go ahead and import a uh, stringing test. So we'll check the settings here. We got seven on the retraction, 30 millimeters per second with zero prime. That's our stock settings. And you can see here off the first piece, and it's also doing a Z hop when you watch that closely. I had to turn that off, and then there's a couple other settings we got to change. So we're just kind of mess with the uh, temperatures a little bit. Went to 225. Uh, I ended up actually going back to 215 after doing some more tests with this. Uh, the biggest problem with this setup was the retraction was set way too high from the default settings. So most of this uh, first few stringing tests I did had a lot of holes in there. So I minimized it down to uh, four on the retraction. Uh, retraction speed is 20 millimeters per second, uh, which is a small amount of prime. And I'll have all the exact settings in the description below. Uh, I did have a little bit of bed adhesion problem when I tested the first, uh, when I put the first test part on. Um, so I'll go ahead and spray uh, a hairspray down on the bed to improve the bed. So after the first test piece, it came up pretty well. Uh, there's a couple issues that we have to tackle. Inside here, there's just wisp, which is good. The retraction is perfect, uh, but there is some sub-extrusion everywhere. So there's two real fixes to that. One, we can either reduce the amount of retraction or we can increase the amount of priming. Uh, so for this particular case, I think I'm sitting at 5 for retraction and 0.3 for prime. I think at this point, I'm probably going to just uh, reduce my retraction down to, point, or down to 4 millimeters uh, and leave the prime alone and see how that turns out. Okay, well our second test piece came out pretty much perfect. Uh, there's just a little bit of wisping on the inside, which is perfectly fine by me. That looks pretty good. Uh, there's no sub-extrusion on the Z-seam. And now we have a test piece that works. So as you can see, there's a lot of work involved in getting your parts, you know, your printer tuned up to print thin wall. So, you know, you get your brand new printer and you're excited to set it up. You purchase your STL files for a cool plane you're going to build. Uh, there's a lot of work to do involved in getting your printer set up and ready to print thin wall. Uh, it's definitely, in my opinion, one of the hardest things to print. You know, the single layer printing is really hard to do. Uh, but once you have the settings dialed in, like I just did with this printer, um, 
and then everything you print, no matter if it's thin wall or reg whatever you're printing, it will come out perfect now because you did all this work to get this right. So now we're gonna start throwing on some STL files for the plain print Eagle. Uh, and I'll report back in a couple days after I've got a bunch of parts printed out and see how we're, how we're doing. As you can see here, these are uh, difficult parts to print, but this uh, printer handled it very well. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is the spool holder. I don't like the position of the spool holder, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and just print out a uh, spool holder that I can mount behind the printer. Uh, so that way I can take off the factory spool holder and create some room kind of in that front part of the printer. Okay, well it's been a few days of printing. Uh, as you can see, I've made some progress. Uh, I've gotten all the PLA parts done. I'm almost done with all the lightweight PLA parts done. I got another about 15 to 16 hours of continuous printing to go. Uh, it's taken me 81 hours of continuous printing to get to where I'm at right now. Uh, so it's kind of a hybrid system between PLA and lightweight PLA. So these are all PLA parts here. So the wing is kind of like the front section of its uh, PLA and then the rear section is lightweight PLA. And then the fuselage is a combination. Of, so the nose part of it is PLA and then the tail portion uh, is lightweight PLA with the tail and another part of there that's the tail. I did all the testing that I showed you guys how to set up the printer, did all the test parts, and then basically from then it's just been printing parts after parts after parts. Uh, I've just been spraying a little bit of hairspray on the bed to for bed adhesion. Uh, it works really good. For the lightweight PLA parts, it's a little tricky because the lightweight PLA is uh, not quite as strong. So when you go to pull it off the build table, you have to be very careful you know, to pull it up because actually the adhesion is actually really, really good with a little bit of spray on there. Uh, so if you just go ahead and pull the part off, it could break that bottom layer. So this is, you know, it's secured on there and haven't pulled it off yet. And uh, if I go ahead and just crank it off, it'll, it could break some of the bottom layer off of there. And then when you go put the parts together, you kind of have a little bit of a gap. So you do have to take, you know, a scraper and, you know, just work that edge up a little bit on the edge to make sure it doesn't pull that first layer off. Uh, you know, and leave it on the build plate. So I got a couple more prints to finish up and then we're gonna start working on assembling this plane. It's looking sweet. I can't wait to start assembling this plane. For the parts like this, they're printed out of lightweight PLA and if you're not familiar with lightweight PLA, you can't actually reduce the stringing of lightweight PLA. So this is completely normal to see all the stringing. Okay, well that's our last part to the Eagle. Uh, we've been close to 100 hours of printing on the Anycubic Mega X now uh, to print this Eagle out. Let's uh, head over to the workbench. We'll start putting this thing together. If you guys are new to my channel, this is what I show you guys how to do. I show you step by step exactly how to assemble these 3D printed airplanes so you guys can buy a 3D printer and build your own planes at home. Uh, I have a link in the description below to my full step by step video. This is just a couple of clips from it uh, where I can I talk you guys through the whole process of how to assemble this and get it ready to fly. This build that I'm showing you guys here is the Plane Print Eagle. Uh, they just released it, and you can purchase the STL files uh, at planeprint.com. I'll have a link to this uh, in the description below, so you guys can purchase the STL files, uh, and then you guys can 3D print your own uh, eagle just like this. Hey guys, check this out. After 94 hours of continuous printing, we have a completed plain print eagle. This thing looks so cool. The print quality came out really well. A couple days of assembly and this thing is done. This looks so cool. We're gonna paint this into a bald eagle and then we're gonna take it out and see how it flies. So it was a really fun build to do. Uh, the Anycubic Mega X did really good to print all these parts out. Uh, if you guys have one, uh, definitely check out my uh, profile three settings down below. And uh, if you guys are looking at getting a 3D printer, definitely suggest getting an uh, Anycubic printer. They work really well. Uh, the build volume is large enough to do any of the planes that I've done on my YouTube channel. So definitely go check out my YouTube channel to see some other really cool 3D printed airplanes that I've done. 
uh, and you guys can check out the STL files and purchase your own STL files and build your own 3D printed airplane and get out there and fly some 3D printed airplanes. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next build.